Well, I headed over to work a little bit with Randy here today. He's got a pattern tile job going on. It's early morning, obviously, but they also got neighbors that it sounds like have a combine and a quad track completely buried up here to the north, so. Now these guys farm about an hour west of us. It's in the mid 20s this morning, so the, the ground is frozen on top, but they are way wetter out here than we are back home. This is why pattern tile is so popular in this part of the world. Wow. They got the quad track stuck back here too. I know it was stuck a lot worse last night from the pictures I saw, but they did get it wiggled around anyway. Oh, it looks a lot worse from this side. It's a lot more stuck than I thought it was when I walked up. Did they try just backing out? <laughs> yeah, they did. I think they even tried going forward. Both ways? Twice. Huh. They got a cable hooked to the dozer right now, back to the draw bar on the quad track. Quad must have been pulling the grain cart? Yeah, so they unhooked the grain cart to pull the combine out. They got the quad stuck trying to pull the combine out. Uh huh. There's just no bottom here. No, it's. Well, like you were saying when you were digging here. The whole ground around you, you can just feel yeah. everything moving. Yeah. It's so soft. The area around me just shakes. Yeah. He's straight now. Straighter. Look at that. The entire ground just moves underneath him. So I believe what he's doing now is he's going to dig behind that right front track. Try to build more of a ramp so it's not just plowing in. It can actually come up the hill as they pull it back. So he doesn't think if he keeps pulling it straight, it'll it'll pull out of that. It's just it's down so far, it's just gonna keep plowing, huh? Yeah, and then the tracks tip downward, so it's actually it's plowing the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get to get turn back up. Right. You, to you gotta get it to plane out. <laughs> yes, yes. Hear me out here. Might it be easier to just keep digging, push it in the hole, and report it as stolen? Probably. And it is red, I mean, it's always a valuable option. But we've got a green one over there to get out. Yeah, who's yeah. going to steal a red one? But then you can get to work on that green one, like you say. It's true. Yeah. Is that empty? Imagine they... I would assume they emptied it. I, I don't know. Moving on last night.
sharp angle and try to dig a little ramp. Pull it oh, forward. Yeah. We went backwards now again. Yeah. That, that whole track, there was about this much showing now. There is isn't hardly any showing again. Now they're discussing where to set the dozer. They're going to bring the dozer around to the front of the quad track here. The ideal angle would be right here, but as he pats the ground with the excavator, the whole everything shakes right in through here. So they're worried about getting the dozer stuck here and having it stuck between the combine and the quad track. It started plowing basically the same way from the front. It's just impossible, as soft as it is, to get that track pulled up and get it on top. Get rear ties for that to go backwards. Okay. The ground is so crappy up here. It just won't work. I think it'll just pull them in worse. Is there a pipe under this field? I don't believe there's anything. No. And then we're gonna start digging this up in the meantime while we're waiting for our guys. Work on both of them. Is the is the water table a little high right now, you suppose, right here? I had peed there this morning. Oh. I had a couple doctors late night. on the way down, yeah. <laughs> so Randy's gonna work on digging what he can out from here, obviously, while they decide how they're gonna place the railroad ties behind that. Three of the tracks are up, they just need that one to quit plowing. We all maybe should have consulted with Michael Bloomberg before this whole farming thing got out of hand over here. He made it sound easy. It's just so soft underneath, there's no bottom to it. Even when they just release the tension on the winch, the tractor sinks about four inches, and if you sit there and watch it for 30 seconds afterwards, you can see it sinking. There's just nothing underneath here, it's just a sponge. Almost like he's having issues with the transmission or something. I think something automatic didn't want to move. It seemed like. It still didn't come all the way out of there. So he's gonna try and sort of carve a little bit of a ramp that will hopefully make a difference here. It's like we keep saying, it's so soft underneath, but if he can build a ramp, they can turn it sideways and get it to pull forward. Ah, the old railroad tie trick.
tried telling him, just try going back and forth. It'll come out. Eventually it's got to. It's got to. They got that track up and out of there. But Randy couldn't spool up fast enough on the winch, so he got, got into the cable a little bit. I'm just going to stay out of the way. Well, the easy one is done. One of the big issues with these combines is they don't necessarily have great spots to pull from. If you watched a couple of years ago, that's why we put a, a mud ox system on ours. Luckily, we haven't needed it, but that would come in handy here. One of the biggest problems they're going to have, or hopefully not have, is that header. If that starts to plow mud, that's going to be a problem. But they can't really unhook it and leave it there, because how, how do you come back and get it? I don't know that even after the ground freezes if you could get it leveled out enough here to get that header out of here. When he shakes the dirt out of his bucket and I was leaning on the header, I could feel the combine yeah, move. I feel it shake. still sliding across the ground. I don't think the hydro can move it as packed full of mud as the duels are. I just learned a little bit more of the backstory here, but they were coming with the combine last night. Got stuck, unloaded, got empty, and they were able to pull it out with the quad track after they took the grain cart off. Combine pulled out to go around this area and fell in with an empty hopper. Quad track came around to try to pull the combine out again and the quad track without anything hooked to it also fell in 100 feet away. This is just, it's crazy how soft it is, everything underneath. Back to my Ranger 570 here that Polaris gave us for a couple of weeks just to try out on some jobs. It's a little bit smaller than the 1000 that we have. Obviously a two-seater with an open cab. A little bit smaller frame, a lot easier to get on a trailer. Pretty handy, you can get a lot of work done with it and, well, and you can have fun on it too. Plus, I really, I kind of like the camel. Normally, I'm not a camel fan. That's a lot colder than I wanted it to be. I'm not a coffee fan, but if I was ever going to drink any right now would be the time, I suppose. But I'm not going to. job they move in this is only half the convoy they got a lot of equipment out here I think we'll call that part one of this video and by the way I, I've never actually mentioned it but you guys have seen me drink the northern chill water it's a higher pH it's right out up here in the upper Midwest right out of Wisconsin I think the higher pH has helped I know it's helped dad and I think it's helped me too with my heartburn issues I don't know what it is I don't know the science behind it but it's really good water if you guys are interested in trying it, they'll ship it right to you. You can get 20% off right now using, I don't know if Becky will put the code right here or if it'll be down below, but if you're interested in trying it, it is really, really good water. I drink a lot of water, try to drink a lot of water, and it's good stuff, so 
check that out if you uh, if you're interested. You planning on laying some pipe? Yes. Not yeah. pulling anything out. I hope not. You hope, yeah, not. I hope not. And I wouldn't mind. The viewers would enjoy watching it. Right. It, it is more nerve-wracking when it's your own equipment. You're not yep. pulling out someone else's. I can imagine so. Yeah. So here they are working on a, another pattern tile job, which basically, if you've seen the videos in the past where I've joined Randy on these jobs, they are going every, I don't know, 70, that's less than 70 feet here, but basically running a pipe all the way up and down this field, and they've got their main line in this field anyway, down on the end here. So this will, am I recording? Why is that thing on? So this will drain all the extra water that's in the soil profile here. It's not gonna dry the field out. It just allows the extra water that can't actually cling to the soil to flush out through, through the soil, below the soil. It actually helps keep nutrients in the soil because then it can hold on to more of those nutrients. So basically the idea is it's gonna be healthier soil and it's gonna be way better yields here because there's not gonna be so much water for the roots to have to fight. So he's digging a hole right now, right down to the main line that they've got dug in here all the way across already. And then Randy will pick up right here and lay this pipe in all the way across, turn around on that end, and I don't know if he'll string it back down or he'll probably survey the way back and he's maybe pulling to the south every time. I'm pretty sure he's dumping water out of the boot like that just from having that boot buried in the ground overnight just so that it wouldn't freeze up. They always do that at night. He cuts in and buries it to keep it from freezing. And it just has that much water in it from being a couple feet under the ground. Laying pipe. Laying pipe. What's your spacing on this pipe? Uh, 60, 60 foot. 60 feet, okay. Yeah. So that's actually relatively wide. It's about as wide as we get. Okay. Yeah. You lay a lot of stuff on 30? 50, 40, 30, 25 even. Sure. Yeah. Anywhere from 60 to 25, pretty much. And this is, is this 4 inch or 5 inch? This is 4 inch. What's the main? Uh, at this point it's 8. Because you're getting towards the end of the yeah. field? The end of it's 8. So it okay. started as 15, 12, 10, 8. you got to get bigger towards the end of the field because it's more water you're flowing. taking more, yeah. And normally when you're out, we are running it on the coiler, so I carry the small pipe on me. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So we get on nice, long, straight runs like this, uh, then it's quicker for him to just lay them out for me. So then he just runs the stringer cart. He's got our, he's got, he's set up on the same guidance lines I am. Okay. So, he's, so he just strings it back both directions. And then he can stay on top of it, the plow doesn't have to stop to put a new string on? Right. Sure. Yep, yep. so I just plow to the end, he's got a cap ready sitting there, and then uh, back and forth. A lot of times we're doing three, four, five hundred foot runs. Yeah. You know, you're kind of, you're, you're working the hills and in the contour. Yeah. So then it, it works way better to carry it. So if you get on 1,500, 2,000 foot runs like this, then it's, then it's nice to string it up. Sure. Seems to me like that spoil, that trench, is bigger than normal. Is that trench bigger than normal because it's so muddy out and there's just mud on the boot? Yeah, it, at least you know, sticky it is. Right. I mean, it's the the boot's about damn near a foot wider than it's supposed to be. You know, so it's just stuck. It just builds up. And will you come by and close that, or the owner will just come by and close it with tillage? Yeah. So, uh, so we brought. So we have a trench groomer that he's going to use. It goes in the back of a tractor. It's like a bee plow. Okay. And, Closes uh, it. Yeah, but he'll wait a week, let it dry out. Sure. And then close them, yeah. What is that hanging above the boot there, Randy, on that uh, chain? That's a depth gauge for doing mains. That's the depth gauge? Yeah, so when you're doing mains, you make I, sure, I don't you make see. sure you're as deep as, make sure you're deep enough. <laughs> I don't see any numbers on it or anything. Correct. Yeah, when those when those are at the ground, it's it's that deep. Okay, well I'll take your word for it. <laughs> when you get to spots that are as muddy as this, and it starts, like the, the plow is slipping obviously, it never stopped moving, right. but it's slipping. So, 
Have you ever gotten this thing stuck when you're pulling pipe? Because you can't just raise the boot up. No, um, well, yeah, quite, I mean, quite often we get stuck. We just hook the dozer on the front and maybe a second dozer and maybe a second dozer with an excavator. Just so, pull, keep pulling the pipe through then as you're pulling, pulling it out? Yeah, yep. Never, usually never the small stuff. Once in a while you might have to hook a dozer on, but in order to do a big stuff, you know, we, we always have at least one dozer on the front. Okay, just because it pulls that much harder? Just because it pulls that hard. Because where you get scared is if you're pulling mains or uh, something really like what we're, where they're stuck over there, where it's just there's no bottom. Yeah. And then this thing will start going down. And I've had it where the tracks are completely under. Like, oh, man. You can't even see the tracks. Oh, man. So then you just get enough iron hooked down to the front and try not to spin your tracks. Like, you only want your tracks to move when they're moving you so you don't spin. Right. Because every time you spin, you just keep going down, and eventually it... It's always walked its way out. We've never, we've never had to do any kind of cribbing to get it out or anything. Oof. I've been pretty nervous. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> so there's a cap ready in the end of this pipe. So when he strings it off ahead of time. Oh, he closed it so you don't have to crush he it. He shoves a cap in it, yep, and I can just plow it in. So I just wait until it's at the top of the boot, and then I drive 10 more feet. And then you know it's out. Yep, 10 feet out the back of the boot. you're surveying on the way back you won't trench both directions no nope. just one uh, this job we would have did both directions if it was dry but as wet as we are we'd have too much water falling us down the pipe so then uh, i'm just doing one direction sure so everything is good now it says good yep, yep. so then it's flickering that 0203 so at like at noon does that switch to food yes yeah. <laughs> It's really a countdown to dinner time. That's what it is. Right, yeah. S such is life. <laughs> right. Jack, I might need your long You arm. can't find the hole? Can't find the hole. Short it's a problem. Short leg, short leg. There, it's right above that depth gauge. There we go. Now we got stuff here. They got a lot of equipment here. I don't even think this is necessarily a big job for them, but I know they got the trucks here because they're gonna be finished with this pretty soon here and then they'll load everything up and move on to the next job. I sure do like it better with the sun out now. It was a little bit chilly out there this morning. So every time Randy takes off and heads back the other direction, Mouse over here fills the last hole. And by the time Randy comes back to this end, DJ's got the new hole dug. Mouse will run the pipe through, hook it up to the connection, and Randy will take off again. So they've got the main line there. He's got it plumbed in. He's got his T in there. The main line is a bigger line that runs all the way from one end of the field to the other, as we discussed earlier. It gets bigger on that end because that's the direction of all the water flow. I'm actually going to hop in the Ranger and head down there right now because Randy said there's a control structure deal down there where they can control the level of the water coming out. It drains a full section, so 640 acres are being drained now, after this is finished, out the end into that control structure. I'm assuming this is it? This is not it. No, this is definitely not it. This is, uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that this here is a post. You can tell that it's a post because of the way it is. Luckily this handy little Ranger 570 is good at making tight turns, so I can just continue back on down the road I was heading on. There's a control structure. So the water's coming in on this side, and basically there's a dam in the middle there that controls how fast it leaves and exits here. There's a couple extra boards or plates right here sitting on the ground that they pulled out to get the water to flow out a little faster to empty that main while they work on it. But all this essentially does is you can control the height of the water leaving the field to slow down the water downstream so that basically you're just controlling the speed at which the water heads downstream to the neighbors or to the to the cricks or as, as it continues on down the hill as we'll say and I honestly don't know 
I don't know here if water goes north or south. We're very close to the continental divide right here. But regardless, it, it's just controlling how fast the water leaves that 640 acres and how quickly it gets to where it's going from there. Does that make you guys nervous? If I'd have dropped you in there, we'd have never seen you again. Cool. You know what? These boys are busy and I think you guys get the idea of what they got going on here. I got, I gotta get ready for a tax appointment this afternoon. So I'm gonna load up and get out of here. Ah, oh, now I'm gonna get mud in my pickup. You. All right, thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in any tiling here in West Central Minnesota or Eastern Dakotas, check out uh, Big Stone Ag Service. I appreciate them letting me come out again to do some filming and Zick Meats, I'll link them down below. That's whose field we were on this morning when we yanked uh, yanked the machines out. So check out Zick Meats, Meats, Zick. Check out Zick Meats. And uh, yeah, appreciate them letting me come out here and, and video that. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.